Hello friends, this video on perimeter and area part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now move on to yet another geometric shape. Let's talk about parallelogram. So till now we have discussed about the simpler forms of uh, parallelograms that is rectangles and square. And now we will talk about a pa any parallelogram in general. So normally what, what are the basic features of a parallelogram? Their opposite sides are parallel and equal. So this is how a, a parallelogram looks like. So in this case they do not have right angles involved. But yeah, their opposite sides are always parallel and equal. So what we will do is in order to find out the area of this parallelogram, that is the entire red region inside, we will try to relate this parallelogram to one of the known figures. Known figures in the sense, the figures for which we have discussed so far, rectangle or square. So in any ways, we cannot relate it to a square because a square has all the sides equal. So let us try to see if we can somehow relate it to a rectangle. So what can we do for that? So first of all, let us name this parallelogram. So let's say this is A, B, C and D. So what we do is let's draw perpendiculars from point A and point B like this. So from A, we have drawn a perpendicular on CD. Similarly, from B, we have drawn a perpendicular on extended line of CD. So this is how we have drawn perpendiculars. Now. Do you see rectangle anywhere? Okay, before that, let's name these points as well. Let's say this is point E and this is point F. So do you see a rectangle anywhere? Yes, of course, you see A, B, F, E. So in this case, A, B, F, E is a rectangle, right? Okay, now how is the area of the parallelogram A, B, C, D related to the area of the rectangle A, B, F, E? So how are they related? So if you observe very closely, you would see that the area of this rectangle is actually equal to the area of the parallelogram. How? Because when we draw this rectangle, we are excluding this region, right? So we are basically excluding this triangle. But at the same time, we are including this triangle. And when you try to compare this triangle with this triangle, you would see that both of these are of equal area. How do you know that these two triangles are of equal area? Let us look at these two triangles. So triangle A, D, E and triangle B, C, F. F. So if you compare these two triangles, you see that angle A, E, D is equal to angle BFC because both of them are 90 degree. This is 90 degree. This is also 90 degree. So these two angles are equal. Okay. Then AD is equal to BC. Why? Because they are opposite sides of parallelogram. So opposite sides of parallelogram are parallel and equal. Again, we see that AE is equal to BF. So they are again nothing but the opposite sides of this rectangle. So these are also equal, right? Because we also know that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel. So the distance between AB and CD will also be equal. And AE and BF are nothing but the distance between AB and CD. So they will be equal. So from this, we can say that Triangle ADE is congruent to triangle BCF and therefore we can also say that area of triangle ADE is equal to the area of triangle BCF. So that means if we are removing this triangle and adding this triangle, that means the total area remains the same. So therefore the area of the rectangle, so we can say that area of rectangle A, B, E, A, B, F, E is equal to area of the parallelogram A, B, C, D. Now, how do we find out the area of rectangle A, B, F, E? So, we know that area of a rectangle is equal to length into breadth. So, for A, B, F, E, length is A, B, and what is breadth? Breadth is nothing but AE. 
so a b into a e so we already know that a b is equal to c d that's because a b and c d are opposite sides of a parallelogram so instead of a b we can write c d into a e so when you look at this a b c d into a e what is c d c d is nothing but base of the parallelogram and what is a e AE is nothing but height of the parallelogram. Therefore, we can say that area of the parallelogram is equal to base into height. So, in this case, if this is your parallelogram, then which is the base? This is the base and which is the height? This is the height. So, this is how you can find out the area of parallelogram. Now, sometimes this Sometimes you might get confused that which side is called base. Well, in a parallelogram, any side can be the base. You can consider this side as the base. You can also consider this side as the base. But if you consider this side as the base, then the height should also be perpendicular on this side from the opposite side. So basically, if this side is your base, then your height should be this. So basically, height should be a perpendicular which is falling on the base from the opposite side. So that is how it is. Similarly, if I say that this side is my base. So if this side is the base, then the perpendicular should fall on this side from the opposite side. So this would be the height in that case. So depending on whichever side you consider as the base, you have to decide which one will be the height. So basically we found that area of a parallelogram is equal to base into height. Now, what about perimeter of a parallelogram? So, how do we find out the perimeter? Now, as we know that in a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. So, if this side is A, this side would also be A. If this side is B, this side would also be B. So, as we have discussed that perimeter is the total length of the boundary. So, basically, perimeter would be equal to A plus B plus A plus B. That is equal to 2A plus 2B, which is equal to 2 into A plus B. So, basically, the perimeter of a parallelogram would be the same as the perimeter of a rectangle. So, let us say that if the sides of the parallelogram are 10 and 15 centimeters respectively, so in that case, Perimeter would be equal to 2 into 10 plus 15 that is equal to 2 into 25 which is equal to 50 centimeters. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.